back to another edition of What's Moving in the Forex Market, brought to you by myself, Kurt Capra, and Pristine Trading. As always, please keep in mind that all comments are for instructional purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. And also, make sure to check out our website, www.pristine.com, for a list of all free webinars that we have this week, as well as throughout the entire month. And uh, we'd be happy to see you in any and all that interest you. All right. Taking a look at where things are at starting this week here, we've got in the upper left the euro US dollar and really continues to remain in this sideways range where from the peak here in mid to later part of August, we've been seeing a series of, you know, overall lower highs with, with each of these peaks getting lower and lower, while the lows are staying relatively equal. But the bottom line is we are seeing a contraction in volatility, and we'll see if that doesn't here in the near future lead to some kind of break from this range one way or the other. But until then, it's really just going to be a sit on hands kind of environment from the swing point of view. Intraday, maybe you can find some opportunities uh, at either support or resistance. But other than that, not a whole lot to do here. Moving on over to Aussie dollar, US dollar. This one more or less sideways as well. Maybe a little bit more volatile, a little more of a range to be trading within. But uh, as you can see, we, we've got the uh, lower highs being made but as far as these lows we are seeing a little bit of an increase in in the uh, previous low to this low here so we got a little bit of a higher low going on again contraction volatility we'll see which way we break right now the main bias should be more bearish just based on the overall trend but that downside does seem at least for the time being a bit limited Further on over to the right, New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar. This has actually broken above this prior pivot high. So we'll see if this doesn't try to make a push up towards the 0.6677 area here over this week. And, and in the coming weeks, we'll see if we can't make some kind of push back up into that area. But that's what's being suggested now based on this double bottom and break through the neckline. And we'll see if we can close above this area as well today. Uh, but but time will tell, of course. If that is what happens, as I said, you'd want to be looking for price to move higher. Bottom right, U.S. dollar yen. This one continues to remain in an in, in even tighter range than euro U.S. dollar, uh, if you can believe that. And so basically here again, uh, sitting on hands in, until you get the break one way or the other because from a swing point of view there's just no volatility here there's really no trend it's just dead sideways so uh, waiting for the break here is really going to be the key on over to the left u.s dollar canadian dollar this has had a sharp sell-off over the last couple of days we're now down to the bottom of our range that had been holding so we'll see what kind of demand we get coming in at this level um, and, and, you know, maybe you get a tradable reversal intraday. You might get a, a tradable bounce intraday. I don't know how much of a bounce we'll get here as a, a swing point of view is concerned. But, <clears throat> again, time will tell here. In either case, you do want to be looking for buyers to try and start stepping up. Not saying that this is where you want to be getting long. Of course, you need to follow your plan. But it's, it's the right area to start thinking, hey, maybe we can, as I said, get some kind of intraday bounce and then in the bottom left pound us dollar this one is staying weak we had a pretty sharp sell-off <clears throat> in the uh, last couple of weeks and now we've just been uh, 